Hello guys and welcome to this cast about in which we will solve one example or one problem using KVL and KCL. Uh, the idea is to help you um, master the techniques and if you have any questions we can meet in the class and discuss them. So this is the problem and it is quite a uh, moderate problem, not so complicated, not uh, easy or straightforward. The idea, the important idea that you need to understand is that later on uh, we will learn some techniques and shortcuts in which the amount of KVL and KCL used is much less. So we will be always using KVL and KCL but with the some, with some shortcuts we can reduce the amount of calculations. The procedure is or the algorithm for solving our problem is always the same going to be uh, first we have to determine our nodes assume currents and determine the voltage drops in the circuit then do, do then to do the calculations our aim of course is to know what is the current through all the elements and the voltage across all the elements okay so let's start we have here as you see there is this one node and this node is a major node because we have one two three four elements the same thing for this node and the th same thing for this node so here we have one two three four and here we have one two three four so we have three major nodes that and the branches or the lines between these major nodes are branches they have distinct currents so we can determine these currents so in this between this node and this node there is a current and we have to be logical since th since this is a source and everybody else are just uh, power consumers we will ass we will assume that the source is providing the current and everybody else are just assuming that current okay so in this branch there is one current i will call it i total then in this branch i total is going to split and it will give us some i1 here and from here it gives us i2 and here it gives us i3 now please note that this point is just a single point it's the same point so whether we are here or here it is the same so i total is coming to this point and is splitting to i2 i3 and i1 then here at this node i2 and i1 i2 and i3 sorry are uh, adding up and splitting again in in this in these two branches they are splitting into i4 and they are split and i5 again this point and this point are single point so i2 and i3 are added here to leave as i4 and i5 then i4 and i5 they add up here with i1 and give us back i total in this branch okay so this is the first part determining the nodes and the currents in the branches or assuming them you could have assumed differently I mean everybody can assume whatever they want in this uh, in the in this sort of problems as long as they we all keep consistency it doesn't matter if we assume I1 is going into the node as long as I total and they are leaving as I2 and I3 eventually if the assumption is wrong in terms of direction we will get a negative number and we discussed this in the class the second step or third step is to determine the voltage drops if we are assuming that I2 entering R2 from this side then we have a voltage drop like this plus minus I3 and I4 like that uh, uh, I3 and R3, R3 sorry then I4 is going in, in the reverse direction here so it is plus minus like that same thing for I5 and R5 plus minus and I1 is going in this 
in this resistance in that direction okay we are done with our assumptions and our uh, plan now we have to make our system of equations that will give us the values of i's in these resistances if we know the i and the we already know the R's we can find the voltages and that is our goal okay so here is the circuit again and we start with this node here in this node I am assuming that I total is entering from KCL it should equal whatever leaves so equation 1 will be I total equal I1 plus I2 plus I3 this is I1 I2 I3 sorry in this node here we have I4 plus I5 which are leaving these two guys equal whatever enters that is I2 and I3 again this is KCL now there is a very interesting note in the book that says that the number of equations that we can get from KCL equal the number of nodes in the in the circuit minus 1 or the number of major nodes minus 1 and this is true uh, since now in this third equation uh, in this third node sorry we can have a third equation but that third equation is actually a redundant equation it doesn't provide any information it says that I4 plus I5 plus I1 equal I total so this equation is uh, is redundant since I total equal I1 plus I2 plus I3 and I2 and I3 are I4 plus I5 so this part here is the same as this part here if we add to this one I1 which is here we will get again as if we get equation 1 or equation 2 in other words the linear combination of equation 1 and equation 2 gives us equation 3 that means equation 3 doesn't provide any extra information or any information uh, any new information okay so we have uh, six unknowns I total and I 1 to 5 and two equations we are short with four equations and those four equations are going to come from KVL now here we have large number of loops where we can choose KVL as we wish so there is one here there is one here there is one here there is one here there are at least eight loops that can be made in this circuit I guess so we choose uh, any four loops which will provide us with the next four equation we needed for the solution okay if I take this control C and go to the next slide control V oh here's loop 3 this one dig 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 like that and loop 4 is this one here okay now these guys are extra so <clears throat> Now we can start with the loop uh, clockwise or counterclockwise doesn't really matter uh, I will start with loop 1 from here and go back like that we have a voltage rise minus 5 and a voltage drop which equals the amount of resistance times the current that passes through that resistance and that's it so from loop 1 here we have minus 5 plus 1 kilo ohm the amount of resistance times the current I1 we can find I1 equal 5 milliamps loop 2 is we can start from here we have a voltage drop then a voltage rise or we can start from here and we have a voltage drop then voltage rise in both cases I mean uh, 6.2 K uh, equals 3.3 K of course 6.2 K times I2 equal 3.3 K times I3 and that is uh, this is loop 3 this is loop 2 so this is loop 2 what I'm talking about okay 
that gives us 6.2 i2 equal 3.3 .3 i3 then loop 3 it starts from here and goes like that comes back here so minus 5 i3 times 3.3 .3 plus i3 times times 3.3 .3 plus i4 times 10 equal 0 and this is written here when we divide by k we can have 3.3 .3 i3 plus 10 i4 equal 5 milliamps and then loop 4 is this thing we can start from here and go back like that or start from here go back like this and we get this result now those are our since we found i1 we are left with five unknowns and those are i total i2 i3 i4 i5 if you uh, build a system of linear equations like this with the solutions like that or if you try substitution <coughs> or any technique that you like you can find the solution for this circuit now I used MATLAB I still have two minutes in the video so if we this is our A the uh, augmented matrix uh, sorry this is the coefficient matrix and B is the solution and if we multiply inverse A times B we get these currents this is I total this is I2 I3, I4, and I5. Now, <clears throat> if you try to add these two up, plus I1, which is 5, we get this answer. Or, if you add these two up, plus I1, which is 5, we get this, this answer. And this is what is really uh, here. So, I total, which we found 5 point something, 5.8, plus that equals... 5 milliamps which we found here plus 3 plus 5 uh, 0 0.3 plus 0 0.56 and the details so we can see that our solution is correct and we can check the power balance at the end of this uh, problem so this is how these problems are done I will do my best to post at least two or three more problems and I hope that helps you if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask thank you for watching